Gourmet Magazine has been chronicling the way folks live and eat since 1941. Now the September anniversary issue of the magazine is celebrating 60 years of gastronomic goodies with some original recipes from years past. Zan Stewart is the executive food editor of Gourmet. My friend, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I was amazed. You know, why would you start a magazine, in, not you, but why would they start a magazine in 1941? There was this little thing going on in Europe. Oh, yes. The, the, the incident called the war. Yes. It was not the best time to start a magazine, certainly not an Epicurean magazine, but look at us, 60 years later. Yeah. Uh, you know, it worked. Really? And it actually, a lot of magazines dwell in the fantasy realm, and it was a good thing for but, people. But Gourmet didn't when it started, right? No, no, no. Gourmet was very, very rooted in what people in the world eat. And we still are. Okay. So what was the criteria here when you were choosing recipes to include in this issue? What tastes good. Um, what, what still tastes good after 60 years. And you tried to get foods that were representative of the time or were most popular at the time? Both. Both. I mean, we, we wanted to be able to make certain statements, but we also wanted food that would translate into today's kitchen. Okay. Make a statement about the 40s. Why'd you choose lobster thermidor? Oh, boy. It's just one of those dishes. I remember my grandparents talking about it, and it was a war horse of the 40s. Delicious, but always kind of rich and overdone. I'm, I usually like lobster plain, steamed with a little butter. Yeah. This, this is terribly French. But this is so good. Yeah, it, it is, doesn't it is pretty kill good. the lobster. It it's is pretty really good. delicious. It doesn't kill the lobster? You mean this guy's going to be alive? No, no, I mean it doesn't kill the lobster flavor. Oh, okay. Um, and then we've got these great mojitos. Thank you. Now, you're very welcome. Cheers. What, what's in a mojito? Mojito is white rum, lime juice, mint, and a little sugar muddled all together. People, you know, the kids today think that they invented mojitos. They're in the bars now. They're very popular. My grandparents were drinking mojitos in Havana at Sloppy Joe's in the 40s. Okay. It's great, great cocktail. Are these the children's versions? Did we? Oh, boy, Did are we? you I'm just this curious. No, 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 I'm just curious. All right, this is the one you and I are going to fight about, the 50s. Okay. The 50s, the decade when people had no imagination. You're going to tell me they were making this soup? They were making this soup. Boy, Come and we published on, this Zan. recipe a lot. Really? Because of the electric blender. The electric blender People was... used it to make tang, that's no, all. No, 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 Pete, no, the tang wasn't even around until the 70s. The, the, the electric blender was originally a bartender's tool. Fred Waring, the band leader, fell in love with it for making his daiquiris. He popularized this, and it came into the kitchen, and it cut a lot of time Aren't out of... the 50s the dark ages for food? Well, frozen foods, I guess, came in, but mm. no, we had good recipes then. All right, the 60s. All right, now the 60s must have been 10 years too long for you because <laughs> <laughs> cheese fondue was the most popular dish. Not in my neighborhood. <laughs> Not in your neighborhood. Okay, well, it sure was in mine. All right, what are we drinking with this? Sangria. Okay. Remember all the sangria parties? Or yes. maybe you don't. They yes, were, and no, this no, was, that's this fine. was, we published dozens of recipes for sangria. This one is delicious. That's better really, than Really, really good. Let's move on to okay. the, um, the 70s. The 70s. Yet the another thing with cheese. Yeah, sorry. It Janice wasn't DeRosa, my choice. Kim Williamson, thanks a lot. A lot of great planning there. Go ahead. Fettuccine Alfredo. When we first published this recipe, we published it f with a recipe for making your own pasta because we couldn't get really wonderful thin pasta in those days. Now we can get it. It's imported. It's beautiful. We've made this with store-bought pasta, but this was when Americans discovered that Italian food didn't have to be just tomato sauce. Yeah, didn't have to be spaghetti and meatballs. What right. are we drinking with it? The Kier. It was, you know, it's a, a little bit, uh, you know, lighter. Yeah, um, a little foo-foo. A little foo-foo, but okay. it was the 70s. What do we got here in the, uh, the 80s? Okay, we move More on. Cheese. We're still in love. We're still in love with Italy, though. Porcini risotto. It's a beautiful rice dish, creamy, but it, it, no cream added. A little cheese at the end and wonderful porcini mushrooms. And the 90s? The 90s, the wrap. We reinvented the sandwich using tortillas. Want to help me with it? Go ahead. You're going to okay, do it. Okay, now this is, this is something. You're going to do it. We're going to wind up doing it during a commercial and tasting it at the back end. Okay. It's a flour tortilla that's been lightly toasted so that it gets fluffy and not all kind of clammy and nasty. A chipotle mayonnaise, because we really want to try to make it up to you after all that cheese, and we know you like chipotle. Right. And then you're going to put turkey and onions. I'm going to taste them when we come back. So okay. All right, hang on. Alrighty. We're going to take a break right here. Uh, 47 past the hour. We're back after this. People always ask me, Whoopi, what's your favorite intimates? Like I'm gonna tell them. If I said it was the ultimate crumb cake, they'd go flying off the shelf and there'd be none for me. So I'd never tell anybody what my favorite is, ever. Intimates, what's your favorite? 
Thomas's bagels. <gasps> Thomas's makes bagels? Nobody makes a fresh bagel like Thomas's. Golden outside, perfect texture inside. Thomas's makes a great bagel. Thomas's bagels. Thomas's. Bring it in, fellas. Here we go. Come on, hustle up now. Come on. Here we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. And hit the ground. There we go. There we go. Last appointment with a great doctor, call 202-877-DOCS. Diamonds. The Jewelry Factory is a direct diamond importer. The Jewelry Factory has thousands of diamonds, most with GIA or EGL certs, laser inscribed and guaranteed the lowest price. One carat solitaires are $5.99. One carat studs, $3.99. The Jewelry Factory has thousands of rings, pendants, earrings and bracelets and specializes in platinum and invisible settings. Only the Jewelry Factory gives you a low price and double value guarantee. Buy Factory Direct, the Jewelry Factory in Bethesda. CBS Wednesday, the amazing race continues. The teams are off on the next leg of their top secret adventure. Kevin, don't say anything! It's the show critics give four stars. Yeah. A thrilling race around the world. Oh, God. More excitement than an Indiana Jones picture. Get in the damn car! They're already addicted. No. Don't miss the show that takes Survivor off the island and onto the road. I'm not gonna quit. The Amazing Race. An all new episode, CBS Wednesday. Last May, in a series called Week of Wishes, we asked our viewers to make a wish, big or small, and then we made those dreams come true for five lucky people. For those who were chosen, the magic has yet to wear off. If you could have just one wish, what would it be? Dear Early Show. Carol Robbins used to be homeless. Her only wish was to thank the man who helped her off the streets. My boss hired me out of homelessness. I wish for him to have a new set of golf clothes and clubs as repayment. It's a pleasure to present to you uh, some golf clubs from TaylorMade. Bill's already put his new clubs to good use, winning his first match in a local tournament. Crisis Center is advising patients. Ambulance dispatcher Christy McCluskey helps save lives, but her family feared for her life because she drove an old, worn-out car 100 miles a day to her job. We, we have a surprise for you. And for all you do for everyone else, the 2,800 Buick dealers and all the great folks at General Motors want to give you this Buick rendezvous. GM let her pick her favorite color and interior. To Christy, it rides like a dream come true. The Posey family's rundown mobile home made teenage daughter Amanda especially ashamed. She does not invite any of her friends over because of what they would think. Sandra Posey asked for a little fix-up and got a much bigger return. And we would like to present you with the brand new Fleetwood home, the Waverly Crest. It's a four-bedroom, three-bath home. And we hope that you enjoy it for years to come. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I've never really had any of my friends over, and now I don't have to be embarrassed. You know, I'm going to have a party. On Labor Day, the family packed up the last of their possessions from the old trailer and moved into their new home nearby. The baby has plenty of space to play. Amanda now has a new room and friends who visit all the time. <laughs> Donna Olda's only wish was to fulfill a promise she'd made to her late husband. He wanted his ashes scattered over sacred ground at Wounded Knee, South Dakota. We helped make that happen. Speechless. The energy, the feeling, the story, everything is just here. I love you, Alan. Rest in peace. You're on your way to Hawaii. Aloha. Scott Butler's wish was to see Pearl Harbor, Hawaii before he died. Through the help of a letter written by a family friend, his wish came true. And there's more. Last month, Scott was made an honorary member of the Kentucky State Police and promoted to colonel by the governor himself. We're proud of you and the courage that you've shown, and uh, we're proud to have you as one of us. He's been through a lot, and uh, this has been a real uplifting thing for him. Dreams do come true, and um, Scott is a result of that. Five letters. Five impossible dreams. Five wishes that came true. Oh, and thank you and so much. Oh, my God. God. My goodness. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. All right. <laughs> it was overwhelming.
It's 8.52 here in New York. I'm Brian Dumble. We understand that there has been a plane crash on the uh, southern tip of Manhattan. You're looking at the uh, World Trade Center. We understand that a plane has crashed into the World Trade Center. We don't know anything more than that. We don't know if it was a commercial aircraft. We don't know if it was a private aircraft. We have no idea how many were on board or what, is, what the extent of the injuries are right now. We, are, uh, we have, I understand, an eyewitness on the phone right now. Sir, what's your name? Yeah, my name is Stuart. Stuart, where are you right now? I'm working at a restaurant in Soho. All right, so tell us what you saw, if you would. I literally, I was waiting at a table and I literally saw a, it seemed to be like a small plane. I just heard a couple noises. It looked like it like bounced off the building and then I heard a, I just saw a huge like ball of fire on top. And then the smoke seemed to simmer down and it just, um, you know, a lot of smoke was coming out and that's pretty much the extent of what I saw. A private aircraft? It, I'm not sure if it was a... It just seemed like a smaller plane. I don't think it was anything commercial. Did you? Could you tell us whether or not it was a, a prop or, or a jet? I honestly don't know. It happened too quickly. Um, characterize the scene for us down there right now, if you would. Excuse me? Can you tell us about the scene down there right now? Um, right now, people are just on the street looking at the building. The building, it was just a lot of smoke. Um, it's not too crazy down where I am. How, but, um, how far away from the World Trade Center specifically are you i'm actually on thompson street north it's i'm not too too far it's 8:54 right now Stuart. can you tell me when this happened exactly i would have to say about 10 minutes ago about 10 minutes ago yeah is, is this normally an area that is that is is heavily trafficked by aircraft or is this an area that uh, that aircraft steer pretty clear of you know i really can't i really don't know that information uh-huh is there, is there much panic around there um, just people on the street coming out looking. There was panic at first, but it seemed to slow down right now. We're looking at a picture of a great deal of smoke coming out of the building. Um, can you please, please tell us, I mean, was there, after you heard this, this crash, um, was there smoke immediately? Um, no, there was like a big ball of fire on the top of the building. And then as that simmered down, there just seemed to be a ton of smoke. And there, so yeah, pretty much immediately. I hear uh, fire engines in the background. Um, has that been going since, uh, the, since you saw this crash, or, or uh, is that kind of late arrival? It happened almost pretty much after we heard the crash. Almost, af quick. almost after yeah, you heard the it crash? Yeah, it was pretty quick when we heard um, sirens and you know, people acting on it. Did you, uh, were you looking up as the plane approached the building, or did, you, did it only call your, catch your attention after it, uh, it crashed into the World Trade Center? I heard uh, like a sort of a crashing sound. But I looked up, and I looked up quick enough to actually see something go into the building. But everything happened so fast, I wasn't quite sure what I was looking at. So there's no way you can know whether or not the plane seemed to be in trouble before, no, no. before it crashed into the building? Oh, no. I, I, no, I couldn't tell. It's, it's hard for us to tell um, from the picture we're seeing just uh, how far down from the top that plane crashed. Um, have you any better eyesight to it um, from your vantage point? Not really. All I know is it definitely wasn't the top, top of the building because that seems to be intact from what I saw. Um, I, I really can't tell. Mm -hmm. right now. You, there's no, can you tell us anything about um, how much debris um, came, to, came crashing to the ground and whether or not um, anybody was hurt as a result? I honestly don't know. I just saw a lot of what looked like crumbling glass, maybe just a lot of stuff falling down, but not, I can't tell you debris-wise. Mm -hmm. Obviously, um, the, uh, the timing of this is, is important. Um, it comes before 9 o'clock. Um, perhaps, perhaps, and, and, and we say that in hopeful fashion, perhaps not everybody was at work um, because uh, if, if that building was, in fact, crowded with, uh, with workers, we're looking at, uh, at, at probably some, uh, some casualties and, and, and injuries of, of considerable proportions. But... Uh, but right now, there's, there's no way of telling that. Um, uh, Mr. Uh, Stewart, just, just one more time, and I know I'm, I'm exhausting what little information you have, but we have people joining us um, every moment. Take me through again where you were, when, you, when this happened, what you saw. I was um, serving tables at a restaurant, and I just heard sort of like a boom sound. It almost, sound, almost like an earthquake sound, and I looked up, and I saw literally something like it might have even bounced off a little bit of a building and next thing I know I saw a big 
ball of fire on the top of the building and just lots of smoke and what looked like to be debris or glass falling down. And it happened really quick. It's really hard to... Okay. Stuart, I thank you very much. I appreciate that, sir. Okay, my pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we're on the line with um, uh, another eyewitness. Um, sir, this is Brian Gumbel in New York. Hey, how um, you doing? I'm fine, thank you. You're Wendell? Yes, I am. Wendell, can you give me your last name? Klein. Wendell Klein. Um, tell me where you are, if you would. Well, right now I'm in the back in the hotel. I'm in the hotel offices here, the front office. You're in the... Okay, where were you when... The, when I, the, I was standing right in front of the trade... Um, the hotel. I'm the doorman there. And... Um, the Jack hotel, went, the hotel. Which hotel? Marriott World Trade Center. Right across from the World Trade Center. It's actually right in between. Them. Right in between the World Trade Center. Yes. Okay, so you were standing outside, and tell us what you saw and what you heard. Well, well what I, I heard first, an explosion, and I just figured that it was a plane passing by. Then all of a sudden, stuff just started falling, like bricks and paper and everything. And so I just kind of like ran like inside to get away from the falling debris and glass and so forth. Then after like everything stopped because it like was falling in the street and the cars were catching to each other and then when it kind of stopped i heard a guy screaming and when i looked over there was this guy that was on fire so i kind of like ran over and i tried to like put the fire out on him and he was he was like screaming and i just told him to roll roll and he said he can't and then another guy came over with his uh, bag and kind of like put the, fl the flames out on him so Right now, um, he's being taken care of. I just had everyone call the ambulance and stuff so it can help him out. He caught fire as a result of the falling debris? Yeah. Um, how much debris? Can you give us an idea of how much came oh, crashing man. to the ground? It's just a lot. Um, bricks, a lot of bricks, a lot of glass. Um, I'm like, enough to like damage cars on the street, make cars swerve into each other, that kind of thing. Any other people on the ground that you saw? No, just hurt? Just him so far. Um, tell me about the traffic down in that area, and I'm talking about human traffic. Human um, traffic, well, at, at 8:55, well, which is see, about the time side, when this happened. 8:45, 8:55. Right on my side, where I'm standing, there's not a whole lot because it's basically right in front of the hotel, so you don't get too much, but you do get enough. You know, get some. What about traffic in the building? I mean, you work basically between the two towers. Yes. Um, most people arriving for work before or after 9 a.m.? Uh, before. Basically, in my hotel, I have people who are just leaving and going to meetings. Uh, outside my hotel, I just had people waiting for their cars to take them to their various destinations, that kind of thing. I hear alarms going off down yeah, there. What, the, what's, what's happening? That's our hotel alarm, and basically, I guess that went off automatically. They've evacuated everyone in the hotel. They evacuated all employees. They kind of have thing. evacuated the hotel? Yes. Immediately? Yes. Um, can you give me an idea of what the scene is like down there? What the what is like? What the scene is like down there at the World um, Trade Center? Just people are like crying and panicking, like want to know what's going on. Um, when I came inside, there were a lot of people who wanted to go out to see what was going on, but the security kind of like kept them at bay and kept them inside. Um, basically right now, I just still have people going towards uh, the bar area to try to evacuate everyone out of here, so that kind of thing. Is this an area, um, uh, Mr. Klein, that is normally trafficked by, by small planes, or is it, is it uh, an area you, that they generally steer clear of? Um, you do get some. I do see some passing. Um, basically, those planes like I do see passing are like those, um, like the planes from Washington, D.C. area. Mm -hmm. like, so there won't be like huge planes, but, you know, big enough. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing anything, Wendell, about what kind of a plane it was no. or, or no. how many were on board? No. No, basically all I all I got was my wife called me. She told me that it was a it was a, a plane crash, and basically I really don't know what's going on so far. Do you know if it was a private aircraft or a commercial plane? That, that I don't know. You don't know. No, sir. You're not uh, seeing any evidence of people being carried out of the building yet. N um, I, there's a woman that was just carried. I guess she fainted or something, but I don't I don't see any physical injuries to her. All right, Mr. Klein, thank you very much, sir. All right, good talking to you, sir. I, I appreciate it. Bye-bye. Um, I understand Teresa Renault is with us right now. Ms. Renault, good morning. Good morning, how this are is, you? This is Bryant Gumbel. I'm down on uh, 59th and 5th. Where are you? I am in Chelsea, and we are at, at 8th and 16th. We are the tallest building in the area, and we my window faces south, uh, so it looks directly onto the World Trade Center, and I would say you know, approximately 10 minutes ago, there was a major explosion from probably, uh, it looks like about the 80th floor. It looks like it's affected probably four to eight floors. Uh, major flames are coming out of the 
let's see, the north side and also the east side of the building, yes. And it was very loud explosion followed by flames, and it looks like the building is still on fire on the inside. Um, which building are we talking about, the one that's westernmost? Um, let's see, yes, sir. So it's coming out on the north side and the east side of the building in the westernmost tower. That's correct. Um, you're, at, you're over in Chelsea. Um, did you hear the explosion oh, from yes. your position? Yes, we did. As a matter of fact, we, we heard it and because and, I was just like standing there pretty much looking out the window. I didn't see what caused it or if there was an impact. So you have no idea right oh, now? Oh, there's another one. Another plane just hit. <gasps> right? Oh, my God. Oh. Another plane has just hit. It hit another building. Oh. Flew right into the middle of it. Oh. Explosion. Oh my God, it's right in the middle of the building. This one into the east tower. Yes. Yes. Right in the middle of the building. It, and right now, that, yes, that was definitely looked like it was on purpose. You saw a yes, plane? Yes, I just saw a plane go into the building. Why do you say that was definitely on purpose? It, because it just, it just flew straight into it. There's not, it didn't look like it was, uh, and it didn't look like a commercial jet. It was a smaller plane. It was definitely a smaller plane. Um, can you characterize the, the scene down there right now for us? Now on the... Yeah, as you can look down to the street yes, from um, your vantage point? On the second building, I think that we, the further one, the east side, um, there it is, looks like it's about, uh, I would say 15 floors lower than the first building, and there is now flames coming out of that building as well. They're both completely on fire. Now, I'm, I'm looking at, um, at what was the uh, west tower, mm -hmm. and it looks like the, um, the fire on the north side of that tower is a little bit lower, but it looks like it's the same building. You're saying it was the other tower that absorbed the second That's impact? That's what it looks like, exactly, from my perspective. Um, Don King, our director, if I could ask you to widen out and give us a shot of both towers, because I can't, I, we can't tell from this vantage point. Oh, okay, that is, that is on the second tower. Yes. It is on, on the east tower. Um, mm -hmm. Teresa, hang on with us one second. We're going to we're going to re-rack the tape of when we were talking to you to see if we can tell. Okay. Um, we can't see anything. We can't see a second plane in the picture. There we see the explosion. Yes. It there we see the explosion. Plane that hit it. Here we are. We're we're we're, we're trying to re-rack the tape right now. Um, Teresa, do you have a vantage point to the ground from where you are? Uh, Y yes, I probably could go down. No, I'm not asking you to go down. Okay. I'm asking if you can see it. Oh, no, I, I cannot see the ground, as a matter of fact. There's, there's too many buildings in the way. I can probably see just up about, um, I would say, uh, up a third of, I can see the top two-thirds of the building. Uh-huh. And, and how much of that top two-thirds do you, do, you um, do you see flames? Do you see damage? Uh, I would say middle of the second building and the top fourth of the first building. Okay, Teresa, stay with us. We're going to look for that tape one more time. Okay. We're going to re-rack the tape here and see if we can't see um, a plane. Oh, yeah, we comes. see it right now. We see a plane right now coming in and impacting on what would appear to be the north side of that tower, of the westernmost tower, mm -hmm. and hitting about uh, 10 to 15 stories below. Teresa, let me ask you to hang on with us for a second while I talk with um, another gentleman who is an eyewitness, Richard Davis. Mr. Davis, good morning. Good morning. This is Bryant Gumbel. Yes, sir. I'm at uh, 59th and 5th. Where are you? Uh, I'm at uh, 50th and uh, 5th, but I'm facing south on the 39th floor. You're, you're facing south, so you have a clear vantage point. Yes. Talk to me about what you see, if you could. Uh, the first plane looked like a 737. Uh, it flew right up the middle of Manhattan. It was clearly too low. I noticed it uh, by the time it is passing the Empire State Building, and I uh, noticed that it was too low. It was, appeared to be absolutely nothing wrong with the plane, and then it very deliberately uh, flew into the side of the World Trade Center. Why do you say very deliberately? Because uh, the pilot aimed right for the building and there was nothing wrong with the plane. The plane did not appear to be in any trouble whatsoever? None whatsoever. And it, we're talking about a commercial aircraft, a 737? It, it appeared to be a 737. I can't be absolutely certain. No, obviously, I'm, been, not, uh, I'm not asking you to be an aviation expert, but, but clearly what, what you saw 
for which it, you say you saw was not a small aircraft. It was not a small aircraft. It was a small commercial aircraft, like a small Airbus or a 737 Boeing. And that was the first plane? Two-engine jet. That, that, did you... Did you see? Here's here, we're, we're uh, Mr. Uh, Davis. We're looking at a um, at a tape replay yeah. of the second plane boring into the building. Um, hard for us to tell exactly how large an aircraft w it is there, or whether or not that was intentional. Um, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Believe me, it's a, it's, it's intentional. We saw the second one come up to Hudson and veer into the second building. Why do you say the second was intentional? Uh, because it was flown very deliberately. There appeared to be nothing wrong with the aircraft. It was flown very deliberately into the building. Have they, um, have, have, you don't, obviously you're at 50th, you don't have any vantage point down there. What, what's everybody else talking about there who has the same vantage point? They see all the same thing you did? Uh, yes. Well, I said that others did not see the first one, but there were several people in my office when the second one came in. Yeah, we're looking at the second one boring in right now and it does not seem to be wavering in any way or seem to be banking to avoid uh, the tower in any I, way. I'd love to say it could hardly be a coincidence that two airplanes fly into the World Trade Center within minutes of each other Yeah. on a clear day. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a terrible scene right now. Yes, the towers are look terrible. Wow. Wow. Um, Ms. Renault, are you still on with me? Therese Renault? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Can you, can you tell us if the scene has changed from, which, from your vantage point? I would say from my vantage point right now, it uh, looks like there are very, very few flames coming out of the first tower, still a lot of smoke. Uh, the second tower, we can still see flames coming out of the window, the north window, uh, and a lot of smoke. A lot of smoke. It, the, the tops of the building are covered in smoke. Um, and from your vantage point, you can't see anything of what's happening on the ground? No, I cannot. We hear a lot of sirens out on the street right now. Um, you could, one thing that you can see in the windows uh, is all of the emergency system lights. That was one thing we could see. All of them were blinking off and on in the first tower when that happened. Uh, and I can't see them anymore. The second tower, I cannot see any emergency lights in the building yeah. blinking. All right, I'm going to thank you both right there and, and pass along the word that we are getting from the FBI that at this point the FBI is trying to confirm, trying to confirm that this was an intentional act. Um, at this point, it's, it's, it's pure speculation. Mr. Davis has, has told us of what he saw and that it appeared the, uh, the first plane, um, a large aircraft, uh, bored into the westernmost of the two uh, towers in intentional fashion. Um, and while, uh, while we were speaking moments ago, a second plane, hard to identify the size of it, bored its way into the easternmost tower. So we have uh, two crashes. Here's a different angle of the same plane. You see it off there on the left. Um, boring, yeah, uh, boring into there. Um, but again, at, at this point, um, it's, it is restricted airspace, it is a clear day, um, so the suspicions are high that these are intentional acts, but the FBI at this point is still trying to confirm that these are intentional acts. We have another eyewitness on the phone. Sir, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Gumbo. How are you? Um, I'm fairly frightened, I have to say. Where, uh, give me your name, if you would. My name is Frederick Schneider, sir. Mr. Schneider, where are you? I am on Liberty Street, which is the same street that the Trade Center's on. I'm on the south side, and the Trade Center's on the north side. My office is on the 24th floor, so I have a very clear view of exactly what happened this morning, and I've been here for about two hours, so I've been watching it unfold. Two hours? Yes. I got to my office at 7 this morning. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. But tell, tell me about the timetable of when um, things started to go terribly bad this morning. Well, Mr. Gumbel, at about 8.50 this morning, there was an explosion. I heard it first, and then my building, which is 51 stories tall, shook and rocked. And then I saw a plume of flame shoot out of the Trade Center over the Hudson River. And then I saw the plane that had crashed into the Trade Center uh, fall down, and then it disappeared behind a building that blocks my view. Um, there was a tremendous amount of smoke, and then it started to rain huge pieces of paper. And the paper continued to come down. 
Uh, at that point, all the news media started to learn about it, and I turned on my radio, and while I was still sitting at my desk, I saw a second jet, fairly large plane, fly in over the south end of Manhattan and deliberately fly directly into the Trade Center before my eyes. Why do you say deliberately fly into the Trade Center? Uh, because um, there was no doubt in my mind that both planes were using the Trade Center as a target. They weren't in trouble. They weren't in distress. They weren't falling from the sky. They aimed for it. And they did a very good job. The Trade Center is torn open. There's a hole in the south side of the Trade Center, torn open from the impact of the plane, which fell into the street below. Would that, would that be the, the, the westernmost of the two towers? Um, the southernmost of the two towers. Southernmost of the two towers. Yes. Yes, it's a big gaping hole in it. Flames and smoke have been pouring out since it happened about five minutes ago. I'm a little shaken because I saw the plane pass before my eyes. It was uh, just about at my eye level. So How I mean, close to you? A block and a half. Um, you say you saw the first plane fall down. Yes. Um, we're, we're re-racking tape here, by the way, and, and for, uh, I'm, I'm speaking to you, Mr. Schne Mr. Schneider, but I'm, I'm showing tape right here of the second plane boring into the, um, the northernmost of the two towers. You say you saw the first plane fall down. What can you tell me about that plane? Well, I didn't recognize it as a plane at first. It looked to me like a charred piece of metal, and I, I had thought that there was an explosion from within the Trade Center. So I thought what I was seeing was a piece of the Trade Center falling because the sheath of the Trade Center is metal. But um, since I've learned that the first explosion was caused by a plane crashing into the tower, I've assumed that what I saw was a piece of fuselage that was falling, and the plume of flame I saw shoot out would be consistent with jet fuel exploding. So you, have, so you really have, have no idea of how large a plane the first one was? No, I didn't even know that was a plane. I learned that from the news media. But I definitely saw the second plane. I heard its sound, and I saw it streaming in from the south. I watched it crash into the Trade Center. Um, you said you're very afraid, and understandably so. Um, they're not evacuating your building? Um, no. I ha I'm going to leave on my own, but I haven't heard any uh, decisions made to that effect. Can you see the ground from your vantage point? Oh, yes. Talk to me about the scene on the ground, if you would. Well, it's completely devoid of vehicles and people. The entire street is totally littered with paper and smoke, and several vehicles are on fire uh, on Liberty Street in the parking lot where either fuel or pieces of the plane fell onto them after crashing into the Trade Center. But There's a tremendous number of emergency vehicles here and continuing to arrive. I hear sirens from every side. All right, Mr. Schneider, you've got a great vantage point. I'm going to ask you to hold on for, with me for a little while, if you would. I okay, know, Mr. Gunn. I know you're anxious to get out of the building. I'm not going to keep you forever, I promise. Okay. Um, but let me ask you to sit tight for a second while I go to Washington, where Jim Stewart is, um, is standing by. Um, he's got some official reaction. Jim, good morning. What are you hearing? Morning, Brian. Well, as uh, by happenstance, I was talking to FBI headquarters at the moment this explosion took place. They saw it occur as we saw it occur, the second explosion, rather, and their reaction was the same as everyone else. Number one, uh, they noticed the clear weather there. Number two, they noticed what appeared to be, in their eyes, a deliberate attempt to crash the aircraft into the uh, World Trade Center. Uh, right now, they are trying to determine whether, in fact, it was deliberate. They have no information they can share at the moment, and I get the sense that they're in the same mode that we are, simply uh, yeah. their Jim, mouth is or Jim, gate Jim, trying let, to figure out what's going on. Jim, let me interrupt for just one second. I'm sure. looking at a report that the FBI is investigating reports of a plane hijacking. Did you have any news of that? No, we don't. No confirmation of that whatsoever? We have no confirmation Is anybody of even there discussing that? No, the only uh, discussion that's been going on here, Brian, is that the, uh, the World Trade Center has obvious symbolic value. It's been a target before of terrorism, and frankly, it would not surprise the FBI or anyone in national security if it was a target again. Sometimes the obvious leads you to a, to a conclusion. We're looking at two crashes 18 minutes apart into an obvious target, a building that has never been hit with a plane before on a clear day. Um, what do the intelligence people there say about that? The intelligence uh, community for some time has been warning in a steady drumbeat, Brian, that Osama bin Laden has not been heard from now, frankly, since the beginning of the year, uh, the USS Cole incident, rather, and they've been wondering, 
when and if he will strike again, and they only believed it was a matter of time. And I believe that today that is going to be their first suspicion. But we have no confirmation of that. I must underline there's no confirmation that this is a terrorist attack, number one, or number two, that it's Osama bin Laden involvement. But I can tell you right now, that is what they are thinking. That is the working premise. And uh, we'll just have to see as the day unfolds what they discover. Jim, as we sit here at, at 9.17, does the FBI have any choice but to sit and watch this on television? I have never heard such a, a gasp of uh, astonishment as I heard uh, speaking to the FBI headquarters this moment, when, uh, this morning, when they saw what we saw, the, uh, the explosion at the World Trade Center, the second explosion, and the smoke coming out of it. It reminded me and, and, and them of Oklahoma City. There's pure astonishment, I can tell you, at FBI headquarters this morning, and uh, they are trying to uh, find out the facts just as we are. And, right and now, they don't have any. And as you noted, Jim, this, this has been a target before. Back on uh, February 26, 93, a terrorist act of the World Trade Center killed six and injured more than 1,000 others. Do you know whether or not the FBI um, had received any warnings about, uh, about attacks on domestic soil? You know, frankly, no, and it's a question that we ask every day. I asked as recently as yesterday of the intelligence community what was the latest on terrorism threats in the United States, whether any intercepted had been picked up, whether there was any current fear here that the target, the next target, would be within the United States. The answer came back no. They were still anticipating that the next strike against American interests would be overseas somewhere. Those are the most vulnerable targets. Today would clearly be some evidence that that's not the case at all. In, in clear weather, as you pointed out, what appears to be a deliberate attack into the heart of the financial district in New York City. You can't pick a more explicit message to send to America if you're a terrorist than what happened today. I stress again, though, this is pure speculation, but it is speculation right now uh, by the people who are going to have to solve this, this crime if, in fact, it is one, Brian. That's a good point, Jim. At this point, it, it is pure speculation. The only thing we can tell you is we are looking at a very clear day in Manhattan on this Tuesday morning. We are looking at uh, two towers of 110 stories in height that are on fire right now that have absorbed two impacts with 18 minutes apart. Um, certainly, it's a, it's a little more than... than uh, it would be an amazing coincidence, I think we should say. Uh, Brian, go ahead. We've just been told that, uh, and this should not be uh, come as a surprise. It's standard uh, procedure by the FBI. Uh, their rapid rapid deployment team from the Washington field office. This is a group of people that they send to major disaster and terrorist incidents, such as the uh, twin embassy bombings in Africa. They have now been dispatched to New York. Uh, I have. Uh, reason to believe, too, that, uh, that uh, some members of the HRT, that's the hostage rescue team, uh, have been put on alert. Uh, we don't have any word yet that they would be sent. And these are standard procedures that would take place any time a major terrorist incident occurs. Uh, but this would be a group of approximately 60 uh, experts, people who uh, are very good at uh, picking up the bits of debris that we've been talking about falling on the streets of New York and turning that into evidence should they discover that this, in fact, was a deliberate act. Jim, um, and if you don't know, to this, know the answer to this, I understand, so I apologize up front for asking you. But do you know whether or not there are any federal offices in the World Trade Center at the upper level? I don't know that there are. I do not believe that there are. I, I believe that the, uh, the FBI and the ATF, the alcohol, to, tobacco, and firearms people are all uh, uh, closer to Midtown, but I don't know the precise answer to that. So in fact, if, if the buildings were targeted intentionally, this would be more symbolic than, uh, than a direct attack on, on the federal government or, or its employees. Um, Jim, let me ask you to sit tight for a second. I understand, uh, Mr. Davis, you're back with me on the line? I am. And Ms. Ra Ms. Renault, you're also back on the line? Yes. Mr. Davis, uh, bring us up to speed. What are you seeing? Anything changed? Uh, no, but the uh, smoke is getting thicker, and I can see flames from some of the windows on the uh, first tower. I can't, uh, my view of the second tower is somewhat obstructed. Where are you, 50th and 5th? I'm 50th and 5th. Yeah. Um, the, the officials there are anxious to... Um, in any way evacuate your building? Or is this just a normal uh, work day? I've been told that uh, Rockefeller Center is putting into effect security measures, but uh, we have not been told to evacuate. Okay. And Miss and Miss Renault, what are you seeing right now? Uh, from the uh, southeast tower, there are still flames coming out of the north side of the building. It, and, it, you know, it, 
may be just my perspective, but it looks like something could be sticking out of that. Uh, also, it looks like on the uh, Northwest Tower that uh, there's possibly, you know, the fire and everything could have moved up because it seems to be that there's smoke coming out higher, um, fl higher floors on the building. You say there appears to be something out. That would be the second aircraft? Yes. The one at the lower level? Yes. And, and what, what actually do you see? Um, it, it just, there's an object that doesn't fit with the line of the building that seems to be uh, protruding and that's what's on fire. Uh -huh. We're getting a look at the building right now and I must say the smoke seems to be obscuring our view enough mm -hmm. so, that, so that we can't identify it. We're re-racking the tape right now. Um, you see encircled there off in the right hand side of your screen, um, this is the second plane. Obviously, the first plane has already collided with the, uh, the top of the, um, the southernmost building, and now here comes the second plane. And you see, making no moves to evade the second tower, and then crashing into the second one. Ms. Renault, let me ask you to sit tight. Mr. Davis, you too, for a second. I want to go to Washington, where White House correspondent Bill Plant is standing by. Bill, what are you hearing on your end? Brian, we're hearing that the president will have a statement to make shortly. He is in Florida this morning. He was supposed to uh, do an educational event uh, with children to push his education bill. We understand that that event has been canceled. There was a senior staff meeting here this morning. Nobody seems quite to know exactly what's going on. The National Security Council said earlier that it had heard nothing unusual. This was after the first uh, airplane impact. Uh, we will hear from the president, we think, very shortly to hear what he has to say and see what, if anything, they know about this, which appears to be so deliberate. Bill, I asked uh, Jim this earlier, and uh, again, I apologize if you're not in a position to, to uh, shed any more light on it, but do you know whether or not uh, officials there at the White House had been uh, forewarned that there was an imminent attack or, or, or there was a heightened sense of alert? We're aware there had been for some time a heightened sense of alert throughout the Mideast, um, but I'm talking about domestically. Well, we do know that there has been a heightened sense of alert. We do know that there have been a number of threats. There are always threats received. They have tended to take them recently a bit more seriously. But it does not appear, and I hesitate to, to uh, make this for certain, but it does not appear that they had any advance warning that anything was going to happen today. Again, this is all speculative, Bill, but are officials there working on the assumption that two planes crashing in the Twin Towers 18 minutes apart on a clear day, not an accident? Hard to believe that they would think otherwise, but at the moment they seem just as mystified as we are. And as I said before, we do expect this, a statement from the president who is down in Florida sometime uh, within the next few minutes. All right, Bill, let me go back to, um, to Teresa Renault. Ms. Renault, I'm sorry I cut you off earlier, and I may again, by the way, um, if the president is, is ready to speak, but give us what you see from your vantage point again, if you would. Uh, from the southeast building. You're in Chelsea, correct? Yes, I am. On the 14th floor, we have a 360-degree view. It's completely clear, a straight shot. Uh, we have on the southeast uh, building on the uh, north side, looks like the north corner, about the middle of the building. Uh, it is still very much in flames and uh, smoke rising from that. Uh, I can't see as m many flames coming out of the uh, northwest building. It looks like, though, that uh, the north side of the building and the west side of the northwest building are, have been opened up and um, still very much covered in smoke in the tops of the buildings. And that uh, the northwest side would be the, the building that absorbed the first impact, That's the correct. higher the higher of the two. That's correct. Um, from our vantage point, it appears that the higher hole is a larger hole. Is that what you see? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I don't know if that's just a di you know, difference in perspective from where I am, you know, because that is the closer building Certainly to it's me. staggered. You're correct. Yes. Um, but we had heard an earlier report unconfirmed that the plane, the first plane, appeared to be a 737. The plane we saw, yes. absent any perspective, seemed I, to be I a smaller plane. I would say the plane. Ex explosion uh, upon impact was much larger on the first hit than the second. You heard both. Yes, I saw. I saw the. I saw the impact on the second building. I saw the explosion come from the building on the first one. Mm -hmm. You're at Chelsea and 14th. Yes. Um, you're. You're. you're well, it's, it's like a 16th and 8th Avenue. Yeah, I'm sorry. In the 14th floor, I apologize. Yeah, not a, Not on 14th. Um, you're. You're a considerable ways away. Any effort there to evacuate your building? Uh, not at this point. No.
Mr. Davis, um, tell us the mood where you are. Um, we were talking to a gentleman earlier who was in a high-rise uh, closer to the, um, the World Trade Center, and he was genuinely afraid, and understandably so. Well, it is shocking. Very shocking to have witnessed. Perhaps we are, can be somewhat more sympathetic to what Israel is suffering at the moment. But they have not moved people out of your building? No. Um, you said you're at Rockefeller Center that uh, security actions have been put into place. What do those entail? Uh, I really did not know. But we have not been told to evacuate. All right. Jim Stewart, back in uh, Washington, you still with us? Oh, Bill, you're still with us, right? I am, Brian. Um, what word are you hearing on when the president's going to come forward? We were just told that the president will have something to say down in Florida any minute. He is in Florida. We believe that his education event, which was scheduled for this morning, has been canceled. But the White House is saying that the president will have something to say. Then he'll leave Florida and come right back to Washington, Brian. Mm -hmm. Bill, had his people, Condi Rice, Colin Powell, um, his security people, his foreign affairs people, um, ever discuss this kind of a scenario? I don't know for certain, but I would be very surprised if they had not talked about it. This kind of, uh, of what-if disaster planning is a staple uh, in Washington, and particularly at uh, senior levels. And I think that uh, these sorts of things are gamed, examined, and talked about, and everyone hopes they will never happen. Yeah, unfortunately, in this case, it would, uh, it would seem to have gone against hopes. So, uh, again, uh, let's bring everyone up to speed. Uh, as best we can tell, wow, we just had another view of the second plane going in. Um, as best we can tell, at 8.45 this morning, an aircraft plowed into the uh, uppermost levels of one of the Twin Towers. Um, a eyewitness has defined that plane, has told us that plane was a 737, but that is unconfirmed. And then moments later, 18 minutes later, a second aircraft, the one you saw just there, plowed into the other Twin Tower at a lower level. Um, that plane, we have no idea of its size. We have no idea if uh, these were intentional acts. We have no idea if these are private planes or commercial aircraft. We have an unconfirmed report from the Associated Press that the FBI was investigating reports of a plane hijacking shortly before the uh, crash into the, into the World Trade Center. Let's go to Florida. President Bush has a statement. Down in Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a, a difficult moment for America. I, um, unfortunately, will be going back to Washington after my remarks. Secretary Rod Page and Lieutenant Governor <clears throat> we'll take the podium and discuss education. I do want to thank the folks here at, uh, at uh, Booker Elementary School for their hospitality. Uh, today, we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. I have spoken to the Vice President, to the Governor of New York, to the Director of the FBI, and I've ordered that the full resources of the federal government uh, go to help the victims and their families and, the f and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. And now if you join me in a moment of silence. May God bless the victims, their families, and America. Thank you very much. We've been uh, watching uh, President Bush, who was down in Florida for what was supposed to be a, uh, an educational event. Instead, he is uh, racing back to Washington as we speak. The president making a very brief statement in Sarasota, um, calling it an apparent terrorist attack on our nation, again, that is unconfirmed and promising the full resources of the federal government to not only help the victims, but also to investigate. And before uh, asking people to pray with him, the president saying that this act will not stand. As he was speaking, we got a report from uh, Reuters that a uh, plane was hijacked from Boston. A plane out of Boston was hijacked. But again, that is unconfirmed. 
Um, we had a report earlier from the Associated Press that uh, there had been a hijacking. Now Reuters is reporting that a plane out of Boston was hijacked. Um, an American Airlines aircraft, we understand, was the uh, plane that was hijacked. This would be um, in keeping with an earlier eyewitness report that uh, the first plane that plowed into the, um, into the uh, World Trade Center was a 737. Um, former FBI uh, agent James Kalstrom is, is, covered the, um, the World Trade Center bombing back in 1993. He is with us on the line right now. Jim, good morning. Uh, good morning. You've been watching this. Talk to me. I shouldn't say good morning. It's not a good morning. No, I apologize. Go ahead. Uh, I don't really know much about it, but it sure looks to me like a deliberate act of terrorism. And, uh, I uh, mourn the, the loss of the lives that uh, I'm sure are going to follow this. Um, I, I've got a lot of questions for you, James. Let me kind of take you, take you through them if I could. Um, because you investigated and worked on the original terrorist incident, the, I should say the terrorist incident back in 1993, can you tell me if these uh, buildings have any special significance by virtue of who's working in them? Well, I don't think it's so much uh, who's working them. I think the, the towers symbolize uh, largely, there's many other symbols also, but the World Trade Center is a symbol. That was one of the original reasons that... Uh, Ramsey Yosef and the rest of that gang uh, uh, wanted to do the World Trade Center as a symbol of America. So, uh, sure, there's other symbols, but I think this is the, probably the tallest one on the East Coast. Um, again, all of this is is unconfirmed. We had the we heard the president call it an apparent terrorist attack. A at this moment, have you any doubt that's exactly what it is? Uh, no, I have no doubt of that. I'm, I would call it an apparent attack. Uh, uh, I think there's probably an infinitesimal chance it isn't, but it certainly uh, doesn't appear that it could be. Commercial airline is number one, you know, and not going to direct themselves uh, into a square hit on the World Trade Center. Uh, if there's some sort of a mayday or something wrong with the plane, you know, they're going to try to ditch it elsewhere. They're not going to do that. And if the reports of a second plane hitting the building are true, then I think that probably caps off exactly what this is. It's a cowardly act of terrorism. How restricted is, is the airspace around the World Trade Center? Uh, I'm not an FAA person, but uh, no, I, I mean I, you can't you that. cannot fly through that airspace uh, unless you're a helicopter, or unless you're uh, anything really, without being guided by air traffic control. It's highly restrictive. So the possibility that 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 two planes on a clear day wandered just happened to wander into these buildings. Um, I think that's beyond the pill. Yeah, that's that's not a possibility. Um, again, you worked on on evacuating. Um, these buildings, you, you saw what, what happened when they were evacuated. Um, how many people are we talking about uh, from what you can see um, on those upper levels? Uh, do we know exactly what time this first event happened? We're, we're guessing, we're putting it at about 8.45, um, Mr. Kalstrom. Yeah, I, I again, that's, that's only by eyewitnesses. Yeah, I, I, Brian, I, don't I think we're talking literally hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of people affected by this. I mean, the smoke alone uh, in the other floors and in the... Uh, you know, when you compare the bombing in the basement of that building, you know, which for a number of hours uh, we weren't sure it was a bomb. We thought maybe it was some sort of a transformer blowing up to a, what's reported at least as a 737 type size airplane, uh, something that size hitting uh, the first tower and then some smaller plane hitting the second. I mean, this is geometrically more catastrophic. Um, a difficult uh, building to, to uh, extraordinary, obviously, because of the, uh, the height of the buildings. But uh, the plans in place for evacuation, are, are, are they, from your experience, um, state of the art? I think they are. I think the whole security of that building, uh, both from a physical security standpoint and from an evacuation standpoint, was certainly uh, reinvented and looked after uh, after that tragedy that happened back in the early 90s. And they're probably as good as they can be. But having said that, uh, you're talking about one of the tallest structures or two of the tallest structures in the United States. And uh, whether or not the elevators are working, they're probably not. They don't be, they're not used in case of fire. You've got a massive evacuation problem on your hands. Would it be, would it be highly unusual, uh, Mr. Kalstrom, for these attacks, if that's what they were, to have taken place without some degree of, of advance warning? Well, I don't know uh, the answer to that. Obviously, the FBI and law enforcement, uh, the people that come to work every day and, and suffer through uh, immense criticism when little things go wrong, <clears throat> these are the days that everyone hopes that they have a very formidable, highly motivated FBI and law enforcement team. And I, I, I suspect we do, 
And these are the things that they try to not have happen. These are the things they try to have the intelligence to avoid happening. Uh, international terrorism, if that is what this is, and I don't know what it is, uh, is very hard to penetrate because it's not very, uh, it doesn't have a hierarchy of authority and it's cellular and it's uh, uh, a lot of different people motivated for uh, for religious type reasons, uh, hatred reasons, and you can necessarily not know a lot about what's going on in an agency if you're in at some right. level because it's so segmented. Again, again, I'm I, I'm I'm getting a, a report now that it was a United Airlines plane that plowed into the building. We don't know. We don't know whether that um, negates the American Airlines reported hijacking or whether or not that was a second plane. So at this point, we're getting different reports. Go ahead, Mr. Kelsey. Yeah, I mean, I, my, you telling me that, Brian? If that is a commercial airline, a United or American or whatever it is. You know that. I mean, my initial thought there is that this plane was somehow commandeered by somebody, hijacked, taken over, uh, and flown into the building. I don't know that for a fact, but that's certainly what it looks like. Yeah, as I'm looking at the second tape right here, and I don't know if you're watching on the line with us, that is definitely um, a commercial-sized aircraft. Yeah. Um, now that we've blown it up. Yeah. Um, it's in just, size. Uh, you know, it's beyond belief, uh, but it's not beyond belief. I mean, we've seen this hatred. Uh, uh, find its way into the embassy bombings in Africa. We've seen this hatred uh, at, at the USS Cole. We've seen it at the World Trade Center in 93. Uh, we've seen it around the world in, in, in acts that take place almost every day. And, uh, you know, for this to then transform itself into this size of a incredible tragedy, uh, to me, although I certainly would never expect it, never ever want it to happen, is not that unbelievable. Yeah, James Kalstrom, let me ask you to sit tight for a second, if you would. Um, Brian Jenkins, a terrorism expert, has been, been with us quite a few times, as I understand, on the line. Brian, you there? Yes, I am. Talk to me. Well, obviously, uh, you know, we, we, we don't know the details of what happened yet. We should have uh, details coming out fairly quickly, though, as to the identity of this aircraft. We're talking about crowded airspace uh, in New York with, with major airports uh, in the area, both in the immediate area of New York and in the surrounding cities. Uh, there should be uh, information fairly quickly that will identify uh, these particular aircraft, uh, and indeed we should be able to confirm fairly quickly as to the identity of the the jet, and perhaps even some last uh, um, some last second uh, broadcasts that may uh, indicate. Yeah. Uh, what what happened, M Mr. Jenkins? I'm going to interrupt for just one sure. second because we're getting word that they are evacuating the White House. Um, down in Washington right now. Well, this would this is this is not surprising. I mean, first of all, uh, an, an, an action of this magnitude is something that um, uh, does suggest a great deal of planning and preparation. In some of these recent actions, we have seen uh, multiple coordinated operations. But who's capable of this kind of planning and preparation? There there are a number of. Uh, you know, terrorist organizations ar around the world that that would be that would be capable uh, of this, um, based uh, primarily in the uh, you know based primarily in the Middle East. Uh, but it's too early really to speculate as to mm -hmm. as to the identity. Certainly, but there any doubt in your mind that what we're looking at here is the aftermath of a coordinated terrorist incident? You know, to 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 uh, explain. Uh, in any uh, as as happenstance. Hold it, hold it, Mr. Two Jenkins. We're looking. There are sure. two jets right now, approaching the um, the World Trade Center. Oh my God. We're watching. Hold on. I'm sorry. No, the air one aircraft is cleared. We can't tell whether it was a plane or a chopper from our vantage point. I apologize, mm -hmm. Mr. Jenkins. No, that's, that's okay. We're, 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 we're more than a bit gun-shy. We're, we're, we're seeing aircraft off to the right side of our picture. We're going to assume at this point that is a copter or is, um, or is uh, aircraft to get a better vantage point. Um, but having seen one go plow in for a second time, we're, we're, we're a little bit wary. Go ahead. I apologize. Okay.
We are breaking into this special live coverage of what's happening at the World Trade Center in New York to tell us, uh, tell you about something going on right here at the Pentagon. You are looking at both pictures. The smoke that you see on the left-hand side of your screen is right here in the Washington area at the Pentagon. Looks like the helipad area something. of the Pentagon over towards 395. Uh, there were there were reports of an explosion. People said the they building shook. They felt the shook. building shake, and they're evacuating that building. We're also getting word that the White House uh, may be under an evacuation order right now. Again, we don't know exactly what happened here at the Pentagon, but you can see the result of whatever it was near the area of the heliport is uh, lots of uh, billowing smoke, dark smoke, and workers reported hearing something and then feeling the area rumble. What do you hear, Tom? There is construction, construction work there, going so it, on there. We don't know what yeah. is the cause of this smoke, but we are keeping you updated on this story. And, of course, the breaking story in New York where one of two planes we're now hearing that crashed into the World Trade Center was hijacked after takeoff from Boston. On the left. On the left is the Pentagon. And on the right is the World Trade Center, where reports now from AP say that one of the two planes that crashed into the World Trade Center towers was hijacked after takeoff. President Bush has called the World Trade Center explosions apparent terrorist attacks. Again, on the left of your screen. Now we're... We're hearing that the Associated Press is quoting witnesses as saying it was an aircraft that crashed into the Pentagon. And that is what we're looking at right now from Arlington, Virginia, our Gannett Cam, looking at this huge, billowing, dark smoke. A plane. So we got two planes witnesses. that plowed into the World Trade Center up in New York. Now we've got a plane, plane that plowed Pentagon. into the Pentagon here in Arlington. Stay with us. We're going to get you more information just as soon as we can. Apparently, the Pentagon being evacuated. There are reports that you the White House may be under an evacuation order as well. The West Wing of the White House has been evacuated, according to AP, amid terrorist threats. You That's can't. the AP news alert just moved across the wires. The Pentagon, this is a live shot from the Gannett camera atop the Gannett building in Roslyn of the Pentagon. You can't see the Pentagon through all the, the smoke. And again, just word that the West Wing of the White House has been evacuated amid terrorist threats. And of course, the other story, the picture you see on the, on the right is the World Trade Center still spewing smoke from the two planes that crashed into the towers. We have no word yet of casualties either here at the Pentagon or in New York. But we did have some eyewitness reports of people on the ground from the spray of uh, jet yeah. fuel on it's fire on the ground. not going to be good. Dave Stadder is on the phone with us now. Dave, where are you? Dave, can you hear me? All right, Lauren, let's... Lauren, are you there? Lauren, did, you're, Lauren Ashburn from USA Today, can you hear us? Yes, I can, Andrea. Lauren, we understand you witnessed what happened at the Pentagon? Yes, I did. What We're did you see? We're standing in the USA Today towers at 1000 Wilson Boulevard. And as we were getting ready to record, um, we watched what a, appeared to be a huge explosion over top of the Pentagon. At that point, we were immediately told to evacuate the USA Today towers. As many people know, they're very tall towers that overlook Washington tall silver towers. And the picture that you're seeing right now is actually taken from a camera that is on top of the USA Today building. We're getting a report, Lauren. See if you can uh, confirm this. An Associated Press reporter saw the tail end of a large airliner plunge into the Pentagon. Could you tell what type of aircraft? We could not tell what type of aircraft it was. The only thing we could see was an, a, a, a huge cloud of smoke and, and what looked like some flames at the, at the onset of that. Um, we, we couldn't see, as you can, I don't know if you can hear right now, but emergency trucks, um, I've seen about 20, 25 of them screaming down Route 110 here in front of the USA Today headquarters. All right, Lauren, stay on the phone with us, can you? Lauren, where are you now? I am, I am on the 18th floor of Tower 1 of USA Today headquarters building. 
looking looking out onto the Potomac River. And, and, and you said they've evacuated from upper floors, or they're trying to evacuate everybody in the at, USA Today building. At this point, they are evacuating everybody in the USA Today building in both towers, both Gannett Broadcasting and mm -hmm. USA Today. Mm -hmm. The West Wing of the White House and the Capitol building have both been evacuated. Again, repeating, the West Wing of the White House and the U.S. Capitol building have both been evacuated. This following three terrorist attacks, two on the World Trade Center up in New York and the terrorist attack you're looking at here at the ago. Pentagon. Apparently, according to Associated Press, an AP reporter saw the plane, he says it was a large airliner, which plowed into the Pentagon. All right, Lauren, thank you very much. Yes, well, oh, I... And you've I got anything report, else? Thank you. Okay, all right, thanks, Lauren. We'll get back to you safely from the ground. I saw, I saw the tail of a large airliner. It plowed into the Pentagon. That's according to Associated Press radio reporter. There's billowing black smoke, which, which you, you can see. obviously see. This, this is incredible. The West Wing, again, of the White House and the U.S. Capitol building have both been evacuated amid concerns over terrorist threats. Um, the the White, White House threatened with terrorist attacks is the reason for the evacuation. We had not heard earlier, people were asking FBI yes. officials whether, whether there, there had been any word, any hints, any leaks of... Uh, of uh, possible terrorist action and no one was concerned confirming anything again this just moving one of the two planes that crashed into the world trade center in new york which is the picture you're looking at now was hijacked after takeoff from boston a u.s official said citing a transmission from that plane and i believe andrea this ap alert white house threatened with terrorist attack that must I think that's something that uh, was probably just released, that there was a direct threat on the White House. Again, the West Wing has been evacuated. The U.S. Capitol building has been evacuated. Joining us by phone now is Don Chauncey. Don, are you there? Yes, I am. You witnessed what happened at the Pentagon. What did you see? Uh, from my office, I was able to see um, a white jet, like a Gulfstream-type commuter jet, I, I guess, just came at a high rate of speed. Uh, I can see National Airport's tower from our office, mm -hmm. right? and it just increased its speed as it got closer to the Pentagon, yeah. and then I just saw the big yellow ball of fire. Don, exactly where is your office from? Where are you watching this? Uh, we're, our office is uh, off right at St. Barnabas Road in the Beltway, so I overlook the Beltway from my office. Mm -hmm. Could you tell, Don, did the plane come out of National? No. No, it did no, not. No, absolutely not. There, there was a, it appeared to be a U.S. Air commuter jet that went over top of our building, which is a normal flight pattern, I guess, for the right. commuters. Yeah. And this looked like it was coming from, I'm guessing, down Columbia Pike in mm -hmm. Arlington, down that way, mm -hmm. and then just picked up a high rate of speed. I mean, from my desk right now, I can see the Pentagon, basically where the metro station is and the yes. buses. I can see that to the right, but I can't see... The, I guess the south parking area. Right. Don, Don, what's the reaction of others in your office? I mean, watching the World Trade Center and then seeing this right literally in your own backyard. Well, myself and another co-worker that sits besides both of us were all actually on the phone looking out the window when it happened, and both mm -hmm. of us dropped the phone and we picked it back up and said, you know, we have to go. It looked like somebody, there was a plane crash either mm -hmm. at the airport or at the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. Don, hold on with us for a second. We're just getting this bulletin. The Federal Aviation Administration has shut down all aircraft takeoffs nationwide. All aircraft takeoffs nationwide have been halted by the FAA. We have Don on the phone now, who was another witness to what happened at the Pentagon. Don, can you hear us? Don? Hello? Yes, Don. Uh, this is Andrea in the newsroom with uh, Mike Buchanan. What did you see? I saw the, it was an American Airlines 757 and it came in and hit the side, it hit the uh, heliport, came, came down Columbia Pike and hit the uh, heliport uh, next to the Pentagon. I live in an apartment building on that side of the Pentagon, and it just crashed right into it. I don't know if it damaged the side of the Pentagon, but the Pentagon doesn't look uh, that badly damaged, but I know it hit at least the heliport on yeah. the side of the Pentagon. You said it was a 757. American How could you Airlines. tell? How could, could you see that? Yes, I could see it. Uh -huh. 
And my roommate is an airplane person, and he saw it too. I mean, we saw the whole thing. Did, okay. Did it, it? It didn't come come out of national. It came no, in it, from the uh, from the west. It came right down. It, Columbia it came right down. Right. Columbia came right down Pike. Columbia Pike. L low and with throttles on. With the th full th like full throttle. Yeah. He actually added power. He right actually by the added Sheridan. power right by the Sheridan. Uh, and that's what we heard from Don as well. He added power and went straight for the Pentagon. So this was no accident. No, no. It was deliberate. This was right aimed right at it. But uh, unfortunately, I think it hit the heliport and and dis didn't look like it damaged too much of the Pentagon. All right, uh, Don. Uh, thank you very much for calling us with that. Thank Andrea. You. Hey, listen. Yeah. Thank you very very much. We have a uh, we have a man named Sean on the line who, I'm sorry, sir, your name, please. Uh, Sean Lansdowne. What'd you see, Sean? <coughs> I'm sitting in my um, bedroom back at home, and um. Where's that, I, sir? It's right in Arlington. I'm like th four minutes, uh, three, four minutes away from the Pentagon. Right. And I was sitting in my living room, and my building started shaking, and I knew that no, don't no plane supposed to make my building shake. Well, when I turned around and looked up, I see this plane, and I agree with the young lady that was just speaking. It was like a 757. Uh, uh, Sean, we're going to stop you because Dave Statter is now on the scene. We've heard from others that it's a 757. Dave, are you there? I'm here, the west side of the Pentagon, the helicopter port off of Washington Boulevard, plane into the side of the building. There's a bit of a hole on that side of the building. Arlington Fire and Rescue, uh, military fire on the scene, putting foam on it. The plane did not seem to go into the building like yeah, the World yeah. Trade Center attacks. It seemed more to glance the side of it and certainly uh, do some damage to the left side of the building. But it's right, if anybody's coming up Washington Boulevard, which is still open amazingly, northbound, it's right where the hell pad is. Believe this when I tell you. Everybody here is scanning the skies looking for a possible yeah. attack. Every Absolutely. fire and rescue crew has been told to be aware of that. Every police officer has been told to be aware of that. We cannot tell you at the moment and as far as casualties, any injuries at the moment. Dave, so it, it hit more of the helipad than it did the building? It, well, it hit, definitely hit the building. Mm -hmm. the building. It certainly, uh, but it, it, it did not seem to be a gaping hole like we saw at the World Trade Center. I can't even tell you what size plane it is because the, it's pretty much consumed. Should be getting a live picture from us shortly. We're trying to call it in now. We do have a, 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 a uh, microwave truck here, so we should be able to give you some live pictures and you can look for yourself. Right now, the looks like National Airport Fire Department is that, or is, I can't tell yet. It's Metropolitan Airport Fire Department is putting foam on this side of the, the Pentagon to try to put out the fire. As of a few minutes ago, there was still a great amount of, a great amount of fire. The fire has lessened somewhat. All right. get a picture up. All right, Dave, we'll let you go for just a second. I want to tell you the White House has been evacuated. The, the entire, entire White, White House, House. Not just the West Wing. And again, we want to let you know that the Federal Aviation has shut down all airplane traffic nationwide. Nothing coming in, nothing leaving. All traffic, air traffic nationwide has been shut down by the Federal, Federal Aviation Administration in reaction to what uh, definitely appears to be a terrorist attack on the United States. First there at the uh, World Trade Center in New York, and now, as you heard from Dave Satter, where the west side of the Pentagon and an area near the heliport um, was hit by a plane. Again, and the White the House has been evacuated and after the Secret Service received credible threat, a credible threat of a terrorist act against the presidential mansion and residents. Again, the AP reporting the Secret Service has received a credible threat of a terrorist act threat against the presidential mansion and residence. We also have learned that Blair Mansion, uh, which is the residence of uh, heads of state who come in as guests to the United States, has also been evacuated. Again, uh, specifically BWI, but this covers every airport in the United States. They've been shut down. All airplane traffic nationwide. Of course, in our area, that means BWI, right. National, Dulles, all closed down, nothing coming in, nothing going out. This is a horrible sight and a scary, very frightening day. Again, what you're looking at now is the Pentagon. Some witnesses say it appeared to be an American Airlines 757, 757. which plowed into the helipad part of the uh, Pentagon, the 395 side of the Pentagon. The uh, Hold on just one minute. All right, we just want to update you in case you have not heard just turning on and don't know what you're looking at. This is not a made-for-TV movie. This is the real thing. On the left, black billowing smoke from the Pentagon. On the right, 
billowing smoke from the twin towers of the World Trade Center in New York shortly after 8.44 this morning in New York. A small, some say a twin engine plane crashed into the World Trade Center tower on the right of your screen. About 18 minutes later, an airliner, some say hijacked a 757 that you're looking at right now. This is a, a, a tape of that earlier this morning. Uh, that building and that plane going deliberately heading straight into the tower on the left of your screen. President Bush has ordered a full-scale investigation, quoting the president to hunt down the folks who committed this act. Shortly after the president made that statement, we were getting word that there had been a plane heading towards the Pentagon going down. And that's what you see on the left-hand side of your screen, the picture in the box on the left-hand side. Dave Statter said uh, you could see it. Some of the flames were beginning to diminish, but what observers noted and those they were in the airline industry so we kind of take what they're saying for at the word 757 american airlines they could see the plane they could see the markings crashed into the west side of the pentagon near the heliport this is a live picture we're just getting here this is the firefighters battling the blaze at, at the, the pentagon. pentagon look at that. so you can see the damage this is just going to be raw tape that Dave Statter and his crew are, are just feeding, feeding into in. us. You can see this terrorist, apparent terrorist, terrorist attack, terrorist. a jet slammed into the Pentagon about 15, 20 minutes ago, the helipad side on 395. We have no word yet on casualties. The Pentagon has been evacuated, as has the White House and the U.S. Capitol building at Blair Mansion. Before this happened at the Pentagon, President Bush went on the air to talk about the response, the U.S. response in light of the World Trade Center. But again, this is what happened right after he said we were going to hunt down the folks responsible for the apparent terrorist attack in New York City. And shortly after that, this is what happened at the Pentagon in Arlington. We're just getting across the uh, wires in Los Angeles. Uh, police departments there are on tactical alert, but there have been no threats in Los Angeles that police are aware of. But uh, as you can imagine, major American cities are on heightened alert. And uh, Los Angeles is saying we are in citywide tactical alert and have mobilized their anti-terrorist division. Let's go back to Dave Statter with more from the site of the Pentagon. Dave. Can you hear me now? We can. All right, I'm here with Michael Kelly, who was a witness to this attack at the Pentagon. I'm going to let him describe what he saw here, I guess, about 20 minutes ago with right, me, Michael right. Kelly. First of all, let me just first describe the scene. This is the west side of the Pentagon, uh, the heliport side off of Washington Boulevard. Were you driving or what? Yes, I was in the traffic on the 14th Street Bridge, uh, right at the Pentagon, tied up going into town. And I heard this plane come over my head. It was really slow. What size plane? It was sounded like a small plane but it was it was very very low and the next thing i know there was a tremendous explosion as it hit the pentagon i looked right i looked over and those the smoke started coming up pieces of the plane were and pieces of the pentagon were falling onto the 14th street onto the shirley highway very scary so i decided not to go across the 14th street bridge i came around and i'm wound up here stopped in the traffic uh, right at the pentagon i was trying to get back over to memorial bridge but uh, no Had you known about the World Trade Center? Oh, yeah, I was listening to WTOP radio <laughs> the whole time. And uh, then this thing came right over my head, and uh, it plowed. It was clearly a similar situation to what happened in New York. There are injured people here. We can't tell you how many. We've certainly seen the uh, Arlington Fire and Rescue Crews, the paramedics working on somebody in front of us. Um, we have not heard the number of people injured. This attack, as you can see, did not seem to really penetrate the building a great distance, even though there is a great amount of fire on this side of the Pentagon, which I believe is, as you can compare it to the World Trade Center, I think the Pentagon has always been called the largest office building in the world, so there certainly is a comparison there besides uh, its ob obviously strategic uh, implications. Uh, Arlington Fire here called in extra equipment. They've called in the National Airport Foam Unit, which is short. Yes, go ahead. Dave. Dave, yes. we Hold just on. want to break in because we want to go back to New York where da Dan Rather is anchoring our coverage where one of the towers at the World Trade Center has collapsed. Let's go back there to are CBS. There no confirmed fatalities. Now, in Washington, uh, the Pentagon has had uh, fire and explosions 
much speculation of what would have caused the fires and explosions at the Pentagon in Washington, but very few facts. David Martin, our Pentagon correspondent, says that he has seen, uh, I believe it said five, injured people at the Pentagon. Uh, one eyewitness and only one so far is quoted as saying he thinks, I put that in quotation marks, he thinks a plane crashed into the Pentagon. But there'll be rumors all day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to try to separate the rumors from the facts. Now, you're looking at a live picture of the twin towers of the World Trade Center. Uh, in flames, uh, with much smoke. Uh, in the last few minutes, there have been uh, two reports, but not yet officially, officially confirmed, that a portion of at least one of the towers uh, has collapsed. But I caution that that's an unconfirmed uh, report, although it comes from two sources, and it's unclear whether that collapse uh, is about the interior of the building or some portion of the exterior of the building. I want to emphasize again, not to be redundant, but this is a day in which rumors are going to spread like mildew in damp basements. And uh, there'll be reports, some of them will be officially confirmed, some not. Uh, that's the environment in which we're dealing. Now, President Bush was in Florida this morning. He called this an apparent act of terrorism and rushed back to Washington. The president is in the air going back to Washington at the moment. Now, in Washington, uh, the, the report spread that a plane also crashed at the Pentagon. See, it's David Martin says there are at least several injuries. Several is the word he used. The FAA has banned all aircraft to have takeoffs nationwide. Here in New York, the city is on a full terrorist alert. Bridges and tunnels are closed. You recall the World Trade Center was the target of a terrorist bombing in 1993. Now, again, it's important to point out that with television, what we can show you is what the t is at the end of the television camera. The whole city is not in smoke and flames, not by a long shot. Uh, the city is on a terrorist alert. Uh, entry into the city has been closed off. Tunnels and bridges are closed off as a precautionary measure. But, uh, you know, in many, many areas of New York City, life goes on this morning, and the same is true in Washington, D.C. So uh, just keep in mind that when you see this picture constantly, uh, it's of one section of New York City, and we go to Washington for the picture there, the Pentagon, uh, the same thing. Uh, these pictures... All right, this is Mike Buchanan along with Andrea Roan. We're here in Washington. We're going to keep you updated on this situation. We've also got an explode. What you got, Chris? We've got Chris. Beltway at 395 at the Pentagon has been shut down. The, the belt Beltway at 395 near the Pentagon has been shut down, obviously because of what you're seeing right here on the screen, a plane hitting the west side of the building, a gaping hole there, and near the heliport. This after two planes struck the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center. Reports of a portion of the second tower that was hit at the World Trade Center appears to have collapsed. What you are looking at right now, though, is here at the Pentagon. Let's recap, Mike. All right, what, what, what are we going to figure? Oh, hold on, here's a... Hey, uh, these are uh, raw footage coming back. That's our reporter there on the scene who will be giving us stories in just a few minutes, but people who have been evacuated from the Pentagon building after that building, uh, the west side of the building, was struck by a plane not long after the twin attacks in New York City on the World Trade Center. An Associated Press reporter says he saw the tail end of a large airliner plunge into the Pentagon building. What we know, uh, New York City is on a terrorist alert and here in Washington the White House White House all of the White House the old executive office building Blair Mansion other major government institutions including Treasury and the State Department have also been evacuated amid um, all right, credible terrorist me, threats please. all right Dave all right, go ahead take thank it thank you we've got some eyewitnesses as you Mike, why don't you stay on show the pictures over here, and I'll talk to the eyewitnesses. You can look at what's going on the firefighting efforts. efforts. We had a couple of people who were in the Pentagon at the time. Tell me what happened. Uh, we were sitting at our desks um, having a meeting, and there was a, a large uh, shutter, or there was a shutter of the building, and the uh, sound of a large thud. Right. You could hear the, uh, the, uh, the impact, and there was a large concussion, like an explosion would, would do the air, would be the uh, concussion. But we didn't know there was an explosion. We just, it was clear. We looked at each other and knew that something catastrophic had happened, but we had no idea what it was. Uh, people began evacuating immediately um, and uh, went outside. And it wasn't until we were outside we realized what had happened. 
how far away from you in the building were you when it happened? Well, if you divide the building into fifths, um, five pie slices, which is the way the Pentagon renovation is scheduled, this is in the first wedge, the new wedge that just was finished, and we were in the next one over. Did you see any injured other than the ones who were out here that we saw? I didn't see any injuries. Did you see what size of plane it was when you got outside? No, just but walking um, up here now um, along the road, you, there are pieces of aircraft uh, spread all the way up the road, um, at least a third of a mile from, from the impact site. What goes on? Can you tell us what would happen be in, in those offices, generally speaking? I know you can't go into great detail. Well, we're looking at the E-ring of the Pentagon, and that's where uh, uh, the more senior officials are. Uh, that area, I believe, is where the Army Deputy Chief of Staff for Operations and uh, the Army Deputy Chief of Staff for Personnel's offices are. We're looking here also, I believe, I don't have a monitor, but I believe you're looking at one of the injured being taken away by Arlington Fire and Rescue. They've been on the scene since a few minutes after this happened. And I mentioned before, but the firefighters and police officers on the scene here have all been warned, keep a close look at the skies, watching for a possible second attack as what happened in New York. Mike and Andrea. All right, we're going to go to Rick Armstrong. He's one of our photojournalists. He's down on the mall. Rick? Hi, Buck. What you got? Um... Not a whole lot other than the fact that the city is shut down. Uh, I'm at the base of the Washington Monument. Park police officer a few minutes ago told me they've shut down all the monuments. Um, they're evacuating all the buildings, including the White House. Uh, I'm, I can look across the river at the Pentagon, and it's an incredible smoke plume. Bet you everybody. Uh, emergency vehicles going in every direction. Uh, look like uh, Secret Service vehicles, fire vehicles, police vehicles. Uh, 25 years here, I've never seen anything like this. What's the reaction of the people there, mostly tourists, I'm sure, and some working uh, in the area? I, I, to be honest with you, I've talked to, I've talked to a lot of tourists, and they're just, what, what do you expect? They're all shocked. It's, hmm. it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, I know. It's it, hideous. I, yeah. I, I know. Yeah. I can imagine what it's like down there. Yeah. It, we're sitting here, every plane we keep an eye on. I imagine right. every everybody throughout the city, Looking you see a plane. Yes. I, I've had no luck making any communication except for I'm on a pay phone. The cell phones are down, yeah. the right. plays are down. Right. I, I don't know why. Yeah, um, I think, yeah, I think we know why. We, we decided to come to this location. I'm with Frank Herzog. We were on a sports story. We decided, decided to come to this location because this is a very likely spot for, for an act of terrorism. Uh, uh, sad it is to say that but yeah. yeah and it's so we're just we're just kind of keeping our eyes and ears open here all right rick thank you very much yeah. let's go to lauren ashburn now usa today she's uh, lauren frank no, this, this is buck. this is yeah. andrea and buck hi andrea hi buck i am on the 22nd floor of the usa today tower one building overlooking this immense plume of smoke uh, the E-ring of the Pentagon, you can't even see it from this distance. There is a helicopter hovering over the site, taking pictures and taking a look at what's happening inside. I'm looking down on traffic, which is completely gridlocked on Route 50, heading out of the city. Heading into the city on Route 395, you can see traffic is moving along quite quickly, and we have heard several... Uh, fire trucks and EMS trucks pass us by here. I'm looking down right on the ground right now on the ramp that would take you to Route 110. They have blocked that off. There's a police officer standing right in the middle of the street um, right now. Thank you very much. I just... Uh... Let's go back to Dave, who is at the Pentagon another, site. Scatter, Dave? Hey, I just heard an, another explosion of some sort. Now, it could be a secondary explosion here from something happening, but we just heard a loud pop just as you were coming to me. It seemed to be on the uh, east of here. I can't tell what it is. It might be something that's secondary to this sure. because we had a number of small explosions after the fire occurred. Dave, we understood there was construction. The area that was struck by the plane and, and what's on fire, was that the area under construction, so maybe there weren't a lot of people in that area? There is, yeah, there, there's, toward the south end of this area, there are construction trailers, I can say that. Um, but I don't, can't tell you for sure if this area was, would be sparsely populated. Yeah. We're actually being asked to move back by Virginia State Police a little bit. We're going to try to keep this location as much as possible. The reason they asked us to move back is because, of course, they're concerned about any secondary Absolutely. explosions. I can tell you from my experience as a firefighter, there's still a great deal of fire inside the Pentagon by the smoke that's coming out of there. I'm sure firefighters are inside making sure first that they can get everybody out that they can and then trying to attack the fire inside. They've also had fire, of course, on the outside that probably involves some sort of 
airplane fuel. That's why it burns so, uh, so what is still burning, in fact, on the south end, on the outside, near those construction trailers. Uh, again, I can't tell you much more other than a loud pop just a few minutes ago that seemed a little bit different, a little bit different than uh, um, the ones we heard earlier, which were on the outside here that could have been tires or something else. We're just watching also as they're taking another man to the hospital. It looks like it's going to be a medevac. Uh, and what I can tell, it looks like he's burned. There seems to be a burn sheet on top of him. Uh, medics are taking him to the U.S. Park Police Eagle helicopter. Um, I think we'll try to get a shot of that. We're going to show you over here on Washington Boulevard. The uh, Eagle helicopter from Park Police is landing, taking this man, this man to the hospital. From my vantage point, it looks like he has burns. We also, besides Arlington Fire and Rescue, see some doctors, what appear to be doctors on the scene, not sure if they're military or not, who seem to be helping with the injured. As you can see, Virginia State Police... Virginia State Police are, uh, again, trying to move us back, as, but I think we've uh, been able to stall them off for the moment. Um, Again, this is the E-ring of the Pentagon. L hold on one second, Mike and Andrea. In fact, we're seeing a second man who clearly is burned being sent to that medevac right helicopter. Right behind that truck. Right there, right there. As you can see, they're rushing him down here. This is a second person we have confirmed yes. has what appears to be very serious burns. Yes, we can see his oh, hands being burned. Can you take it back for a second? We need to coordinate something here. Sure. I'll be right back All with right. you. All right. We're just getting across the wire to, again, uh, what preceded the Pentagon uh, plane a crash was the horrific destruction of the uh, two planes crashing into the World Trade Center, which you see in our picture on the right-hand side of your screen. A witness said he saw bodies falling from the 110-story towers and people jumping out. There are no confirmed casualties or injuries, but you know, looking at this. This is tape. This earlier. is tape from earlier this, this morning. When the jet plowed in, w now we're getting word one of the World Trade Center towers in New York City has collapsed. It's collapsed, the structural damage from the two planes plowing in. Uh, also to let you know, because of what has happened, the Federal Aviation Administration has shut down all airplane traffic nationwide. Nothing coming in, nothing going out. BWI will allow planes to land uh, that were in uh. the traffic pattern for landing, but uh, I think after that... Uh, everything will be shut down. We're in a lockdown is basically what it is. All government buildings, major government buildings have been evacuated. Uh, we heard from our, our crews on the scene that the Pentagon is, has been evacuated. Monuments and museums have been evacuated. Let's go to Frank Herzog who is near one of the most visible monuments in the city, the Washington Monument. Frank, what do you see? What do you hear? I'm on the west grounds of the Washington Monument. The area has been completely evacuated by park police, and I think I could answer Dave Statter's question about that secondary explosion. Yes. It wasn't an explosion. That was the sonic boom of jet fighters that were scrambled out of Andrews Air Force Base, we believe. Mm -hmm. They just circled the Washington area, flying from the east out to the west, and they were in a hurry, and they were high up in the air. So jet fighters, at least one, possibly two, were scrambled, probably as a precautionary measure. Needless to say, downtown Washington, D.C., except for the vehicular traffic, which is bumper to bumper, the rest of the city has been shut down. It looks like a Sunday morning here. The mall is absolutely empty. Park police came through about 10 minutes ago, evacuated the entire area, and told tourists to go somewhere else. But I can tell you right now that at least one, if not two, jet fighters have been scrambled. They are patrolling the skies over Washington. Frank Herzog, thank you very much. Let me just read you the lead, the Associated Press lead. Just came out of New York. But first of all, let's check in with Dave Staddard at the Pentagon. Dave? Uh, oh, it collapsed right now. As you can see, I assume you're taking our picture. I do not have a monitor. But right now, we just had a middle section here of the E-ring of the Pentagon collapse from the uh, amount of fire and destruction from this. So obviously, there was a great deal of damage uh, here. It just collapsed. Uh, we don't know who is inside or how many people are inside. You heard somebody, uh, one of the people who was inside the building, talked to us a short time ago and said this E-ring of the Pentagon has a great many senior officials. So if somebody was planning something, this might have been the place if they wanted to get senior uh, officials. Um, again, most of the fire on the outside of the building has been extinguished. There's still some spot fires on the outside of the building. And still, from what I can see, a great deal of fire inside. So now you have a gaping hole on the west side of the Pentagon here at Washington Boulevard, and this collapse just happened. It was not an explosion, a secondary explosion. This apparently the damage from the great deal of fire and the structural damage from the plane crash. Any word yet, Dave, on casualties? Other than seeing the two people we saw medevaced who had serious burns, um, 
I have not, I can't confirm any others. They've been working on people, but we don't know what's inside that building, to be honest with you. So certainly, Dave, certainly anybody in those windows or in those offices by those windows, uh, you have to be very, very concerned about right now. All right, Dave Statter, reporting from the Pentagon here. You can see from uh, Dave's camera shot, several people being escorted out of the Pentagon. The Pentagon is being evacuated, as is the White House, the U.S. Capitol. Most uh, monuments, museums, um, the city basically, as you've heard from Frank Herzog and from uh, photojournalist Rick Armstrong near the Washington Monument, uh, closed down. Almost everything is closed down. As you can see, a portion of the Pentagon has collapsed. This happened after a jet apparently deliberately plowed into the Pentagon. We have Daniel McAdams on the phone. He is an eyewitness. Daniel, good morning. What did you see and where are you? Uh, I'm here in Arlington, just off of Columbia Pike, probably about uh, two, two and a half miles from the Pentagon. And uh, we were sitting in our living room uh, having coffee, and it sounded like a, a military jet flyover that they, that they do sometimes, you know, a very, very low altitude flyover. And then just a couple of seconds later, we heard a massive boom. Uh, all of our doors and windows shook. Uh, we went outside, looked out the window, and then saw a plume of smoke. Everybody All right, uh, Daniel, thank you very much. Let's go back to Stat Dave Statter. Dave, what do you I have? I know, Stat, hey, they're, ta they're evacuating us now. They believe another plane. This could be a rumor, but they're evacuating everybody. Possibility of another plane coming in this direction. Certainly, but this is a major evacuation at the moment. Again, it could all be a rumor, but FBI is evacuating everybody out of this area. All I've right. got to go at the moment because they want to let Dave. me stay here. Be safe, be safe. When we heard from Frank Herzog that uh, boom that Dave thought he heard before was um, Air Force jets scrambling high up in the sky uh, on alert. Uh, if there is something else coming in, we hope they get it first. We are looking again at the Pentagon where an aircraft crashed into the Pentagon this morning causing what we had just seen, uh, a gaping hole in the E-ring of the Pentagon, evacuations. We have seen transports burn victims. We do not know about any casualties. We don't know if everyone was evacuated from the Pentagon before that collapse. We are watching, as you just heard Dave Satter say, they are evacuating and moving back all of the news crews, getting people as far away from that building as possible because they thought they spotted another plane in the area. We do not have any confirmation on that, but we will keep you updated. The Federal Aviation Administration has shut down all air traffic nationwide. This following the aircraft that crashed into the Pentagon, two jets two planes crashed into the World Trade Center up in New York City. President Bush said today we have a national tragedy upon learning of the two planes crashing into the World Trade Center. He said he would be returning immediately to Washington and um, the president has ordered a full-scale investigation to hunt down the folks, quote, who committed this act. And again, what you're looking at within an hour of the uh, Twin Towers explosion, an aircraft crashed at the Pentagon as well. The White House and other major government buildings, Treasury Department, Defense have all been evacuated and airplane traffic in and out all around the United States is closed down. Let's go back to Lauren Ashburn who's in the USA Today building in Roslyn. Lauren? Yes, good morning Buck and Andrea. I am taking a look right now at the Pentagon there are one, two, three, four helicopters I can see from the vista here in the USA Today Tower 1, one building, that, building overlooks. that overlooks all of Washington from Arlington, Virginia. I can see one helicopter is on its way, it looks like to me, to the Washington Hospital Center. It's attempting a landing right now. I'm sure uh, there are two others following in that direction at this point. I'm looking down at traffic. Traffic is at a standstill, leaving the city. There are hardly anybody, hardly any cars going into the city via Route 50. Traffic is backed up over the Memorial Bridge. And I'm looking down at police officers who are telling people to get off and turn around as they're coming in off of 395. Yes, Lauren, we had heard that the Beltway near 395, which is that Pentagon exit, uh, is closed down. So if you're leaving the home or going in that direction, don't. Go the other way. Just stay put. Stay home.
Now, Andrea, yep. yes, Lauren. I can see the sky. I know you had talked about possibly another plane yes. from somewhere coming. I have a vista almost 180 degrees here across the horizon, and I can see not one single solitary plane. Good. The only thing I can see are those helicopters I talked to you about. The one helicopter has landed, it looks like to me, at Washington Hospital Center. All right. We have on the phone now Daryl Jenkins. Uh, Mr. Jenkins, you're an airline security expert with what organization? Washington University Aviation Institute. All right, sir. You've seen what's happened this morning. Give me your read. Well, our lives will never be the same again. This will change everything we do in this city and everywhere else around here. Uh, this is the day that we will all remember until we die now. This is... I can't even imagine anything more worse than what's going on right now. The, the terror is just unspeakable. The, uh, I mean, basically what we probably have, uh, Mr. Jenkins, is what, three hijackings and then the terrorist plowing to the World Trade Center in the Pentagon? That's, that's correct. Uh, and uh, uh, just the enormity that somebody would do something this awful to innocent people, uh, there's no cause that can justify this. Everything about aviation will change, and, and even the Pentagon was under attack and there's smoke coming from this. So uh, whatever airports have been in the past, in terms of nightmarish getting through, the nightmare is only beginning because travel become unspeakably difficult now. What, what, I mean, what happened to airport security, security, sir? I have no idea how any of this happened. We have no details at this time. I'm sure, though, that uh, all resources will be uh, brought to bear on this. Uh, in the future, getting through any airport will yeah. be very, very difficult. It yeah, will not be pleasant ever again. I yeah. think you said it best, yeah, though, at the beginning. Our lives will never be the same. Everything will change after this. Everything will change everywhere in this city and, every, and in just about everything that I do in commercial aviation. Mr. Jenkins, you know I can remember... I can remember years back, it was the D.C. Police Chief Maurice Cullinay, Jerry Wilson, uh, Isaac Fullwood... They all said someday terrorism is going to come to the United States. Well, I think it, today it did. Today it did, and, and like we said earlier, our lives will never be the same. I assume right now our nation's under attack and we're at war with some foreign body. All right, Daryl, thank you very hey, Darryl, much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Speaking of how everything is going to change, especially at major airports around the world, Gary Reels is at National Airport by, the, by phone. Gary, what's going on there? Well, Andrea, it is, uh, I hate to use the cliche, but it is truly a scene out of a movie here. The dark, uh, acrid smoke wafting over from the Pentagon has shrouded the, uh, the terminal area here at National Airport. Lightly, not, not a dense fog here at the airport, but a light fog nonetheless. And there has been, we've been here at the airport proper now for about 20 to 25 minutes. There, there is still a constant the, uh, stream of people evacuating the entire airport. Of course, as you've been reporting, airport operations around the United States have been shut down very abruptly, and National Airport is certainly in the thick of that. Uh, there are still, at this hour, hundreds and hundreds of people evacuating, just streaming by foot, by foot. Everybody's walking. Uh, there's a heavy security presence here, needless to say. And, of course, uh, the people uh, who are here and are leaving here can see very clearly the cause of this, and that is the uh, the plane crash uh, into the Pentagon and the smoke. Uh, they're getting a first-hand taste of it. All right, uh, Gary, thank you. Gary Hold Reels on. reporting. One well, second. The State Department else. has just been evacuated. After a possible explosion or a fire, a senior government official speaking on the condition of anonymity said the incident appears connected with the two plane attacks at the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. According to this source, quoting now, something has happened at the State Department. We don't know what yet. We hear it might have been a plane. This... Uh, anybody, Frank or Rick, uh, Lauren, can anybody see anything over at the State Department? Statter? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. You hear anything about the State Department? No, I know there was concern here. Let me ex describe what happened when we had to rush off a little while ago. Yes. Um, there was concern, and we don't like to put rumors in, on the air, and I'm not sure that, that you can call this a rumor, but FBI on the scene at the Pentagon. 
told everybody to leave the area because there was concern of a hijacked plane that might be coming in this direction. Hold That's on. We know. Hey, Dave? Yes? We just got this bulletin from the Associated Press. A car bomb explodes outside the State Department. Being attributed to senior law enforcement officials, again, a car bomb has just let's exploded. Go to, let's go to Frank, Frank Herzog, who is outside the State Department. Frank, what have you seen? All right, we'll hold on for Frank. This Frank is, had been down at the area of the Washington uh, Let me Monument. just tell you, we're, I mean, if you're just waking up, this is not a dream. This is not some B-movie you're watching. And this is not a Tom Clancy scenario. This is the real thing. This morning, about 8.45, a plane crashed into the World Trade Center in New York. Eighteen minutes later, another plane, apparently a hijacked jet, but out of Boston, bound for L.A., crashed into the world. You see the picture right there. That's the second explosion when this American Airlines jet, apparently hijacked, plowed into the World Trade Center. Then about an hour ago, there was an explosion at the Pentagon. A plane plowed into the Pentagon near the heliport. Look at the, this. Oh, and one of the towers we had reported that one had collapsed here is proof that... Frank Herzog, where are you? I'm uh, still at the Washington Monument. I'm looking at the State Department. Yes. What do you see? Nothing has happened there now. It looks all quiet. But I, I am getting reports from Park Police that another plane was hijacked out of Pittsburgh. That's the word they're getting. Another plane was hijacked out of Pittsburgh which may explain why those two fighter jets were scrambled out of here right. about 15 minutes ago. Yeah, but they... so far, the State Department is quiet. There's no indication of anything going on in the building. All we hear is just the constant wail of sirens here in downtown Washington. Again, to confirm what Dave Statter told us just a few minutes ago, Pentagon officials are evacuating people from the area of the Pentagon, fearing another plane could be en route. Frank Herzog has been told by a U.S. Park police officer there's been another hijacking this plane out of Pittsburgh. Apparently, the, we got a scram. They're scrambling out of Andrews Air Force Base. Uh, other major government institutions, including Treasury and the State Department, uh, were being evacuated even before we heard about something possibly being directed specifically at the uh, State Department after the explosion at the uh, Pentagon. Again, we are looking at two pictures. The one on the left of your screen is the Pentagon, where a section of that building has collapsed, struck by an aircraft. This is New York City, where one of the Twin Towers collapsed after it was struck by aircraft, one of the 110-story towers. Emilio collapsing. Delano, he's a terrorism expert over at American University. Sir, are you with us here? Emilio? I think we just I think we, we lost, just lost the phones him. in this area. Everybody's on a cell phone. Trying you to can't get, a, get uh, out. The, uh, this was live of the second tower. We believe the second tower of the World Trade Center just collapsed. That's what you were looking at live. You can't see very well through the smoke, but is it is obvious that those two large structures that we saw just a little while ago aren't there. We're going to pick up live coverage from our sister station in New York, WCBS. Let's listen to now what reduced to a pile of rubble and ash, smoke billowing above the city. Jim Smith, mm -hmm. stay with us, mm -hmm. if you will. What is the uh, evaluation and what else you're uh, able to see from your vantage point? Mm -hmm. Oh, Michael, we have seen the entire lower half of Manhattan just completely covered in smoke, debris, dust. Everything well south of Canal Street is just completely and covered in this smoke and dust at this time. Uh, there is not anything recognizable of what were the two trade towers, nothing mm, mm, mm. standing out from oh. those clouds of dust at oh, this time. My goodness. We understand the schools in the area reporting that the children were there. At last report, at last report, the children were safe. They're saying that the parents, if you can get there, and in this, oh, frankly, it'd be yeah. quite difficult. The schools are under a lockdown. The mm -hmm. children are not allowed to leave unless the parents come to get them. But we have heard word that the children are okay. Uh, the, the casualties here are far... We, right. we don't even want to speculate. No, we do we have can't. reporters oh. at St. Vincent's, at Bellevue, uh, throughout the city, crews throughout the city. We know that you're worried about your loved ones sure. down there. This is the financial district of the world, and clearly... Something. Untold number of people that are down there right now, yeah. and this is as close as we can get to the scene. Jim Smith, you're about, what, five miles? Yeah, that's right, there? Michael. We're about five to six miles away. Uh, we've oh. been forced to move to Staten Island at this point to bring you these pictures. And mm -hmm. we understand to go along with the airport shutting down and no airplanes being allowed to take off nationwide, uh, we have been in contact with military aircraft in the area. 
that are enforcing a complete no-fly zone. Once we land, we will not be allowed to take back off. So as aircraft are removed from the area, none will be allowed back in. That's understandable. Uh, Langley Air Force Base, all the Air Force bases, you would imagine, are on high alert. Possibly, I don't know if anybody's, we're not hearing that. We're trying to get the beat on whether the military and to what aspect the military has been and is taking action about this. Again, not a confirmation per se, but it's hard to imagine that this is anything but a terrorist attack. We're getting some information here. Um, Just the timeline of yeah. the events, but let's stay with what you're looking at, if we could, as a live picture of what is left of the Manhattan skyline. Jim, I want to bring you back in because we have reports that there are uh, United States fighter jets uh, cruising the area over New Jersey. Can you confirm that? Yes, we can. Uh, our pilot has been in contact with some F-16 fighters that have been in the area. Uh, we do not know exactly... All right, welcome back to Eyewitness News. We want to report Mark Brady of Prince George's County Fire and EMS are telling all duty personnel to report to their duty stations immediately, regardless of their schedule. They want all Prince George's Fire and EMS personnel to report to their duty stations. One of our photojournalists, Denny Bly, has just called in. He says there's at least 15 people injured at the Pentagon. We saw the uh, tower both towers now collapsed at uh, World Trade Center and from American Airlines they are saying a plane that crashed into the World Trade Center was one of theirs it was flight 11 from Boston to Los Angeles that was American Airlines flight 11 from Boston to Los Angeles was uh, the plane that crashed into the World Trade Center this uh, AP advisory is from American Airlines. Anthony Garrett was inside the Pentagon when the plane slammed into the area near the heliport, the E-ring. Mr. Garrett? Yes. You okay? I'm fine, yes, thank you. Tell me what uh, what you heard, what you saw. Well, <clears throat> excuse me, I was over there just meeting with uh, some of my customers. I'm a defense contractor, and um, we were standing around watching a CNN report on the uh, World Trade Center incident. Yeah. When uh, we felt a, a jolt, something along the lines, I would suspect, of like a minor tremor, uh, and then a strong gust of air uh, went through the hallways. Uh, immediately after that, uh, everyone, someone in the hallway started yelling, get out of the building now. Panic inside there? Excuse me? Was there, obvious, was there panic inside there? Yeah, it, it, uh, it, it got fairly chaotic uh, quickly as everyone was trying to run down the narrow corridors there on the, uh, on the, D, the D ring to, right. uh, to get to an exit. You believe this, Mr. Garrett? Uh, it, it's, it's certainly uh, of great concern, I guess. Yeah, yeah. it's putting it mildly, mm -hmm. I guess. You were talking about uh, panic. We want to go to Bruce Lashan. He's on the phone, and there's uh, panic, as you can imagine, downtown. Bruce, can you hear us? Yes, Andrea. Yeah, I, I would describe it as kind of quiet chaos here. Many, many of the buildings have been evacuated in downtown. And there are thousands of people out on the street trying to figure out how to get home. There are long lines uh, next to the parking garages as people try and get their cars and get out of downtown. Around the executive mansion, people evacuated from the White House grounds, and they're setting up a rather wide perimeter around there, at least down as far as 15th Street on uh, one side there. The uh, uniformed Secret Service uh, officers have uh, been putting out yellow tape and refusing to get let anybody get near the White House Treasury Department uh, complex in uh, that area. And a lot of people who were working on the White House grounds <coughs> in the surrounding office buildings kind of walking around with shocked looks on their faces. A lot of rumors flying around here. Uh, so far, no specific incidents downtown, but uh, many emergency crews uh, running around and uh, heading in various directions, uh, uh, trying to deal with uh, anything that might uh, crop up. I actually saw two paramedic units from Walter Reed Hospital coming all the way down here downtown uh, to kind of station themselves and, and uh, prepare for whatever might happen. Uh, advice for people who are watching and might have business downtown, don't. Yeah. Do not come down here. It is absolute uh, gridlock down here, and they're doing their best to keep uh, everybody out and the streets cleared, and it is a very difficult proposition. Bruce Lashan, thank you. Please oh. stay in touch. We're getting word to CNN is reporting that, as we told you, Capitol Hill, the Capitol has been evacuated. Now CNN is reporting that members of Congress has, have been taken to a secure location. Members of Congress being taken to a secure location for their protection. This is unbelievable. The United I States basically has been attacked.
the U.S. has been attacked by terrorists this morning. Wall Street is shut down. The nearby World Financial Tri Center, which houses NYMEX, was evacuated. The American Stock Exchange, the New York Mercantile Exchange, the Chicago Board of Trade has suspended all trading today. Business and trading in other parts of the country have been affected by this around the country and around the world. The investment community is on hold. As Dave Statter is at the Pentagon. Dave, can you hear me? I hear you, Mike. The fire continues to burn out of control at the Pentagon. It looked like they were getting, making some headway. We don't know if they had to pull back because of the threat that came in here, but right now there's still a great deal of fire inside, inside the Pentagon at the moment. Firefighting operations may have ceased for a little bit because of the threat. The threat, again, which you've been talking about, is that there's some other plane that may have been hijacked. FBI agents on the scene here moved everybody they could away from the Pentagon, including us. There was a, a beef, brief bit of panic as people ran, and uh, they forced us out of the area. We're now a little bit further away, looking at the west side of the Pentagon, near the heliport, the E-ring, where they say a lot of senior officials' offices are. It continues to burn, I guess, about 20, 30 minutes, sort of lost track of time. That whole middle section collapsed. Um, that wasn't from the initial explosion, apparently from the great amount of fire there and the damage done when the plane hit. Still have conflicting reports over what size plane hit. We heard one eyewitness tell us that it was a small plane that he seemed to see as he was coming across the 14th Street Bridge. Believe it or not, somebody else said they saw something as big as a 757. We just don't have the confirmation for you yet. Number of injured, medevaced, taken by helicopter from the area. They seem to be suffering very serious burns. Again, the fire burns out of control, continues to burn on the west side of the Pentagon here. Dave, from your vantage point from where you are, you, you, don't, you can't see any portion of the plane. Is that correct? There was debris all over the place. In fact, I looked down. Uh, Mike Trammell, photographer and uh, Heather Cabot, a reporter here, uh, said, look down, and there was a piece, a small piece of what apparently... Hold on, Dave. Sure. Hold on just a second. We've got by. a bulletin from AP. A large plane has just crashed in western Pennsylvania. Again, the Associated Press is reporting a large plane has just crashed in western Pennsylvania. That's according to officials at the Somerset County Airport. That's near Pittsburgh. Again, we had a report that a of another plane a hijacking in near Pittsburgh. Now we're getting now we're getting a report of a large plane crash uh, in western Pennsylvania, Somerset County. We have um, someone on the phone. I couldn't get the name. Tell me who you are, please. Dr. <laughs> Gerald Post is joining us by phone. Dr. Post, um, your reactions? Well, the, the coordinated nature of this attack makes it clear we're not just talking about an isolated group. And I'm sure the mm -hmm. dominant suspicion, although no responsibility has been claimed, will be with the, uh, the Al-Qaeda network of Osama bin Laden. It's uh, really, it's really, uh, I, when I turned on television, yeah, I must yeah. say, I, uh, I thought it was some sort of fantasy movie. Right. Uh, for Dr. Now. Post, we uh, have this quote from Chris Yates, an aviation expert at Jane's Transport in London. He's quoted as saying, it takes a logistics operation from the terror group involved that is second to none. And you would, well, be, you would agree with that. That's absolutely correct. And that, uh, uh, that makes it clear we're talking about a a major organization with highly sophisticated operatives. And Doctor, where's our intelligence? Yeah, how do, we, how do we protect ourselves against this? That's one of the terrible things about terrorism uh, and how difficult it is, uh, it is to protect about the, the unknown, unseen adversary. Do we do anything as a, as a terrorist expert? What should be our response? And so far, no group has claimed responsibility. What should we be doing now? Well, the, 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 the first effort, obviously, uh, apart from responding to, to, uh, uh, to this multiple site uh, attack, is, uh, is to identify uh, who is responsible. Having said that, as we saw with the uh, embassy bombings, mm -hmm. in fact, I was recently involved uh, in the trial and Dr. Federal Post, Court. let me interrupt you for a second. Again, our viewers, if you're just tuning in, you're looking at the smoke at uh, the harbor in New York resulting from the collapse of the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center. We're still getting another report from AP as well that senior law enforcement officials say a car bomb has exploded outside the State Department. 
Uh, it was already among buildings in the nation's capital evacuated earlier due to the attacks. The official says, quote, something has happened at the State Department. We hear it might have been a plane. Then we're hearing car bombs. We don't know. We Again, this could just be fear and rumor, but uh, this is coming from a quoted a senior law enforcement official saying something has happened outside the State Department. If any of our reporters are able to clue us in on that, Mike? Uh, CBS is reporting that there's been another hijacking. A 737 unknown what airline has been hijacked. CBS is reporting that plane is now circling Dulles International Airport. Again, CBS reporting another hijacking. 737 passenger jet has been hijacked. The report is it's now circling in the area of Dulles International Airport. Here's a quote from a service station employee. What the hell is going on in the country now? That's the reaction after seeing from his vantage point the crash and the smoke at the Pentagon. Again, the initial report we got from our colleague Denny Bly is that 15 people have been hurt somewhere buried in that rubble is a jet. There have been conflicting reports, whether it's a commercial, large commercial jet or a private jet. They said uh, witnesses say Pentagon employees are walking down Columbia Pike to get away from the scene. There are long lines forming at pay phones as people try to make contact with friends and family to let them know yeah, they're the all cell right. phones won't work. Cell phones won't work. Hold on, let me... There is apparently a mass exodus from downtown D.C. creating incredible gridlock as office workers try to get home. The district government has ordered all workers out of all of its buildings. All of the area is shutting down. Back to Dave Statter. Dave? Yeah, I'm, I'm here, Mike. We just had a military jet fly over here very low. Um, we can tell you from the people we've been talking to coming from the Pentagon, they'd have a very little in the way of information. And there's a lot, as you talk about rumors, that have been circulating through here. 101 in the crock pot. Delicious. Good. And easy. Yeah. Well, good luck with it. Thank you. Coming up later, travel to sunny Palm Springs, an oasis of mid-century modern design. Up next, a favorite plant from the past grows more popular still. Buy Factory Direct and save 30 to 70% at the Fitness Factory Outlet. Check out the greatest selection and lowest prices on award-winning fitness equipment at Chicago's only factory-owned home fitness stores. Body Solid Home Gyms ranked number one by Consumers Digest from $3.99. Endurance Club Style Exercise Bikes from $4.99. Our Endurance brand treadmills featuring full lifetime warranty starting at just $7.99. Start off the new year right. Come into Fitness Factory Outlet and bring your health club home today. Hey, what are you doing for fun this summer? Let the good times begin at the 36th Annual Chicago RV Camping and Van Show and the Chicagoland Boat Show, beginning Wednesday, February 18th through Sunday, February 22nd. See over 500 RVs and hundreds of boats at the Donald E. Stevens Convention Center in Rosemont. Nearly 50 of Chicagoland's best RV and boat dealers will be there to show you the latest and greatest in boats and RVs. Admission to either the RV show or the boat show gets you into the other for free. So bring the whole family and plan a summer of fun for everyone.